Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters of the Week video. Well, I thought I would mix one of these videos in here while I'm continuing to do your aliens and UFO suggestions. So please keep those suggestions coming. I'll probably be doing about another four or five videos on a very, very soon format. So this one has to do with yet another random entry there within the cryptids.wikia.com website. As always, whatever the random entry lands on, that's essentially what I'll talk about here unless it's something that I've covered before already in another video but this one has to do with a legendary creature of sorts something that apparently lived a long long time ago and could be a variation of yet another legendary animal in that case being the unicorn you know about that more here in a minute but yes reading the information tied to this definitely goes back a long time in terms of its existence in fact you're looking at a representation of it now and it's known as this. It's known as the Monocirus. So let's go ahead and let's talk about all the fascinating information associated with this legendary animal. So what is this Monocirus? Well, again, this is a creature that has been around for a long time. In fact, to give you an idea of what the earliest time period it could be, this was when the Greek culture was essentially first starting, which is somewhere around like around 3500 BC or so, just to give you an idea of what the earliest it could be. It may be even before that time period. Who knows? There just may have been not many other people around to record it during its existence. But otherwise, it's been synonymous with that type of culture. And the reason for it, too, why it's called Monocirus is because it comes from that language. Essentially, it stands for only one or single, and then it also means horn. So essentially, single horn or only one horn, Monocirus. And the reason for that is this. The the way it looks like, by far, the most distinguished thing on it is this. It has one single blackish horn right in the middle of its forehead. It's usually about one to three feet in total length, and it has this horn almost as a form of a defense, but in a unique way. I'll mention that more here in a minute. Otherwise, the rest of its body looks very much so like a horse, or it could be some other type of variation of a horse, and then it has the head of a stag. Interestingly enough, it's been described as having the feet of an elephant, whatever that means, and then also the tail of a wild boar. So if you mix all of these together, including, of course, that most prominent middle forehead uh, in terms of that horn, then that's essentially what you have here as far as the monocirus. Clearly, though, that, that stands out um, as far as its link to another mysterious creature or magical creature of sorts, and that's the unicorn. So who knows? Maybe the unicorn is in and of itself a cousin of this monocirus, or maybe the monocirus is a preview of it. Maybe it was there long before the unicorn ever existed if the unicorn ever did exist. And who knows, maybe the unicorn and the monocirus are the same altogether. They just happen to be misinterpreted as different creatures. But otherwise, this creature itself, the monocirus, was there during the Greek time period. And it was described quite clearly in a gentleman's book, one that I mentioned in the past here in some of my other videos, Pliny the Elder. If that name sounds familiar, I've covered him within some of my other past videos, some of the other creatures that he he has turned notated in a book of his, uh, an epic book of his called Natural History, which you're looking at here. This is a book where he describes a whole assortment of just fascinating creatures that he documented throughout, I guess, part of the world and other parts of, of, of cultures. And when he did so, somewhere in that passage, that's where he loaded this, the Monocirus, and that's where he described it in all of its glory. And the fact that it's been mentioned there also ties into another book, one that's called a uh, Christian topography by a traveler, somebody that was known as Cosmos Indisoplastus. I'm hoping I'm saying that last name correctly. Cosmos Indisoplastus. And he, in turn, described that creature very, very similar to how Pliny the Elder was describing it in his book. The difference, though, is this. This guy, Cosmos, didn't necessarily see the creature himself. In fact, uh, I don't even think he saw anything of it, like from even far away. Rather, he saw some figures of it at a palace of a king by the name of Ethiopia. And when he was there, he was able to in turn draw those figures, and that's what he included in that 
book in, ter in terms of that Christian topography. So again, that gives you an idea. Two different people, Pliny the Elder and the other guy, Cosmos, both of them describing this creature, but both of them pretty much to a T as far as its clear uh, characteristics, including, of course, that, that blackish horn. Although, interestingly enough, that horn has been depicted as being different colors in some of the other drawings and so forth that you'll see here. So I'm wondering if there's still yet again other variations of that. You know how there's um, different types of animals out there whenever they're trying to attract other mates whether it's female or male how they have different colors associated with their bodies so i'm wondering if that's the case here maybe one uh monoceros will have a black horn or maybe another one will have a lighter horn color in order to try to attract more mates who knows but that's just another theory associated with that but i was going to mention this too that horn has a very unique defensive attack but it's not necessarily something like it uses you would think that it would use it to like gore someone like let's say if someone is attacking it then it would just pretty much run up to that person and then use its one foot to three foot length horn to impale someone no in this case all it uses it is more defensive and this is what i mean apparently this is very very hard creature to catch uh, very hard to do so I mean, it makes sense because there's so little association as far as like people having it in captivity or having it in some kind of I don't know if you'd call it like a traveling cage, anything like that. Pretty much just people just seem to have seen it out there in the wild. Well, it did that because it was very, very hard to catch. And here's why. Whenever it's cornered in some location, like let's say it's going up to some area where the only escape is some precipice, some kind of cliff or some other area where it would be a huge fall. And normally, of course, no, no animal, no human, nobody would take that fall unless they were trying to kill themselves if it was some kind of suicidal wish well in this case this monoceros will gladly jump down that particular uh fall like in that other cliff and when it does so it uses the horn as a form of protection so the way i was reading it is this it's going to sound a little weird but let's see if I can make sense of it. Whenever it falls from that cliff, you would think that it's just going to go splat, let's say, on the bottom of the of the hill or the bottom of the cliff right there on the ground. But no, it'll twist and it'll turn its body enough so, so that its horn is basically facing downward. And then when it lands, its horn absorbs the entire shock i mean that's was something that was really surprising me when i was reading this information so yes it'll use that horn to basically uh, keep itself alive it'll use that horn to absorb everything in terms of that impact and then it gets up pretty much unscathed i don't know how necessarily how that does it you would think that something like this would not exist out there in the animal world especially considering if it's a very very long fall but it seemed to work it was able to escape so much captivity by being able to do this very trick and then there it is trotting off into the distance and everyone else is of course scratching its head wondering you know what in the world is they just see but that's essentially its defensive attack it will go up to some corner it'll escape by jumping off a cliff and then it'll land straight on its horn and then use that horn to absorb the entire shock and then come out of it unscathed alive unhurt and then it's moving off to another distance fascinating stuff no when it comes to this monoceros but as far as any other encounters associated with it unfortunately there's none Wherever it was in terms of his existence back then during the Greek culture, uh, it seems like it stayed there and then that was it. It hasn't moved on to anywhere else. Unless, of course, as I mentioned earlier, it descended or moved into some other variation of the unicorn, which in of itself is impossible to find to this day if it's even still alive if there are some creatures out there like the unicorn but otherwise this monoceros it doesn't seem to be anywhere else um, so if anyone has any more information on that maybe in terms of one horned creatures like this that are out there in this world then please post those comments below it'd be interesting to see if it's moved on to any other type of land or any other type of continent whatever is the case in terms of that or if it died off somewhere who knows but you would think too that with something like this with its horn being so prized eventually when it dies off whether it's of old age or something along those lines or maybe it might have even been killed in terms of other type of battles that it had with other monoceroses you would think that its horn would last that there would be more remnants of it somewhere 
But alas, there seems to be nothing along those lines too. But again, if anybody has any information in terms of that end, um, in terms of like, let's say where you think in your area, wherever you live at, there's been tales about this monoseers, then please, I would love to hear what that information is too. But all right, everybody, that's pretty much it. All the info associated with this cryptid of the week, the monoseers. But again, any info you might have, post those comments below. All right, everybody. Thanks again as always. Take care. Bye.